So, the first movie came out, first Ghostbusters movie, came out in 1984. Um, I was weary about watching the first Ghostbusters when I was a kid because I didn't like scary movies. I didn't like jump scare movies. I thought that was going to be it. But um, it wasn't a jump scare movie. It wasn't a horror movie or whatnot. And I loved it. I loved it. It's become, like a lot of people my age, a cultural staple in my life. The second movie came out. Um, a lot of people didn't like the second movie. I had no problems with it. Was it as good as the first one? No. Um, was it hokey here and there? Yeah. But all in all, you know what? It was a fine movie, right? It was a fine movie. I, I, I really had no major problems with the second Ghostbusters. Uh, Ghostbusters 3 um, actually came out in video game form. I hadn't played it. People say it wasn't all that great. I don't consider it canon. Moving on. Uh, then the 2016 reboot came out. Um, didn't really like it. I like Chris Hemsworth. He was funny. I thought he was funny in it. And I've got nothing against the actresses who were in the 2016 reboot. I just, it, it was basically a whole movie about, hey, remember this? Yeah, remember that? We're going to do it like this. And, and, and remember this? And it was just, and then it was over the top and, 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 schlocky and just no not for me so when i heard that they were doing another ghostbusters movie i was like really especially after the 2016 one oh wait ivan reitman's son is directing it and ivan reitman's gonna be involved okay maybe then i saw there was like a teaser trailer for it and it was just like uh ecto-1 in some like abandoned barn and like this sheet flies off it, and that's all we see. I was like, okay. I mean, all right. Maybe it's just like it's 20, 30 years later or so forth. Okay, we'll go for it. Then the trailer came out. And the trailer was nothing but Ecto-1, PKE meters, traps, proton packs, driving around in Ecto-1, firing off proton packs. I was like, oh, no. This is going to be similar to the 2016 movie where it's like, Remember this, remember this, remember this, remember that. I was like, oh no, uh, all right. So I went and saw the movie. And I loved the first three quarters of this movie. The first three quarters of this movie, it was charming. Like, yes, it had all those things that you saw in the trailer. It had PKE, it had the traps, it had Ecto-1 and all that, but... What was great about the first three quarters is that it wasn't, hey, remember this. It was new characters that we actually liked finding the equipment and sort of unraveling what has happened in the last 30 years. Um, I also thought, I was like, okay, in the 2016 movie, all, all, all four technically, but three of the actors, because Harold Ramis died, showed up as cameos, as different characters, in the 2016 movie. And I'm like, I hope they don't do that here. I hope they don't do that here. No, please, just just give us, you know, expand the world. Don't worry about the original four. Just go. And then Dan Aykroyd showed up. But, he didn't show up as, you know, like, another character, or, hey... Look who's here. He played the same character. He played Stan. Stan? Whatever. I can't remember what Dan Aykroyd's character was. Um, and his whole purpose was just to sort of fill the audience in what's happened in the last 30 years. You know, where the characters are. Beckman's doing this. Winston's doing this. Egon's doing this. So forth and so on. Oh, and by the way, I guess I should say spoilers because I'll probably be spoiling a fair amount of this movie. Um, and that was it. The, the, uh, the, they got disconnected on the phone, and, and Ray was gone. Yeah, Ray something, I can't remember his last name. Um, I was like, okay, I'm fine with that. I am fine with one of the cast members showing up, explaining what's happened. Now let's move along with these new characters, right? And these, this new situation that they're in. 
And they did that for a while. It, these new characters and all that type of stuff. And then at about three quarters of the way through the movie, they started bringing up back the Remember Berries. They brought back the two ghoul dogs. And Zool, Gozer. They didn't have a giant Stay Puft Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. There's one point in the movie where uh, Paul Rudd's in Walmart and it's possessed. And they could have done anything. They could have done anything in this Walmart, in this possessed Walmart. And what did they do? They brought back little tiny, tiny Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Like hundreds of them, thousands of them. They could have done anything. And I'm like, oh no. They're bringing back the Remembers. Okay, so before I continue on, I'm going to just quickly mention how the movie began. Um, the, the movie begins with a man uh, being... We, we see like a, a proton pack being fired off in the distance and then he's being chased by something. And it looks like he... Um, uh, he has something in a ghost trap. He gets to his house. He, it looks like he sets something up and then he holds it out waiting for something to come at him. And we can't see this guy. He's, he's all in shadow, right? They, they purposely shot, uh, sh uh, shaded his face and there's a reason why. Uh, and uh, it's clearly he set up a trap of some kind and his trap fails. Um, so he basically has to go to plan B and he knows he's, he's basically a goner, right? Turns out that was Egon. Um, and we, find, we don't find out that was Egon until like halfway through the film, but we assume it's Egon, essentially. Um, because like I said, we don't see his face, it's all in shadow. Um, I believe in the trailers it showed Spengler on the the jumper and all that type of stuff. We, we just basically assume that. Um, and it turns out that the main characters are, are Egon's family. He, he had a family of some sort. And not with Janine. Janine shows up in this film very early on. Basically, she, I guess, cared for Egon so much that she kind of paid his bills while he was working on some Save the World situation but Janine wasn't the mother of the of the main mom right because Egon had a, a daughter who had her own kids so at some point Egon didn't get with Janine he got with some other woman or created her in a lab which knowing Egon I wouldn't doubt but that's a side story uh, and yeah, so he dies, he passes on this farm to the family, and it kind of unroll, un it kind of is, it, it, it's a mystery. I think that's the other thing I loved about the first three quarters of the movie. It was a mystery. What was happening? Why was there earthquakes in this Oklahoma town that shouldn't have earthquakes? What was Egon doing? Why is all this equipment, you know, like, collecting dust and everything? What has happened? It was great. I loved it all. And then they started bringing back the Remember Berries. And then the capper of it is... At the end of the movie... Um, basically, the kids and the mom... Are basically doing what Egon did at the beginning of the movie. Uh, they've, they've got one of the ghosts for you know trapped in one of the traps. Back to the house. Because apparently the house that Egon had built was a giant, a super ghost trap. And uh, they were going to trap Gozer. Why they brought back Gozer, I don't know. Why couldn't they come up with something new? I'm pretty sure as fans, we would have been, okay, there's a new super demon on the way. Oh, Midnight wants to join the review. Um, so their plan was to trap Gozer, this giant trap at the farm. And then they brought back the three remaining actors for the final fight against Gozer. 
And I just sat there like, you could have done anything. Yes, it was great you brought back these things to remind us. But you could have taken this in a whole new direction, just like the Walmart bit. They could have done anything with it, but no, they had to do, hey, remember this? We're bringing this back. Yes, it's slightly different, but remember this? Oh. They even had, um, prior to the three-quarter mark, uh, a, a ghost that they, they meet up with. Uh, like I said in the trailer, where they're driving around Ecto-1, firing the proton packs, and I was, like, weary about it. It turns out um, that was actually a good chase scene because they actually find a ghost. They find a, a, a large... A blob-like ghost. And I was like, oh, no. That better not be Slimer. No, 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 please. Oh, it looks a lot like Slimer. But they they clarify, it's not Slimer. It was, uh, I think they called it a muncher. And its uh, whole purpose was to, to eat metal. So I was like, okay, something new. Yes, I love it. They're going to take us in a new direction. New things. Expand the world. Love it, love it, love it. No... We're just going to recreate the end of the first movie. There, there, there's literally a part in the movie where uh, one of the ghoul dogs chases Paul Rudd just like he chased Rick Moranis in the first movie. There's even a part where, like in the first movie, Rick Moranis escapes and the dog goes bursting through a glass. They do the exact same thing in this movie. He gets out of the Walmart and the ghoul dog bursts through the front door and it ends up possessing him. <sighs> yeah. And as I said, I was spoiling it. So yes, um, this giant trap at the very end, because they do defeat Gozer. Uh, for, <laughs> for some reason, it didn't work for Egon. And then when they, uh, they tried again with Gozer coming at the farmhouse to get the, the trapped ghost, because apparently, I guess, Gozer can exist without the two ghoul dogs guarding her, surrounding her. I don't know what it is. They don't quite explain that all that well. Um, and uh, one of the kids turns a proton pack onto the power source that Egon built, and that activates this giant trap. Um, I have some questions about that, though. Like... If Egon had the ability to trap Gozar, and he knew exactly where the temple was that Gozar would show up, why not put the trap there? You know? It, he already set up a, sort of a, a safety system to keep the ghosts at bay in this mine. Why not just set up the trap there where Gozar's going to show up? Why drag Gozer all the way to this farmhouse? Oh, and there's something else that just occurred to me as well. I said the three remaining actors showed up. And then they also brought back Harold Ramis, the actor who died, who, was the four, who played Egon, the fourth, act, uh, fourth Ghostbuster. They brought him back in CGI form. He doesn't say anything. Thank cripes. I'm glad he didn't say anything. They didn't get some voice actor tried to mimic... Harold Ramis's voice or that. No, no, he was silent, so that's good. But I was like... Oh. It just screams, Hey, remember all this stuff? Anyways. I went into... I, I, I went to this movie expecting to be disappointed. And I was so happy that I wasn't until I was. And, I, and that makes it worse. The disappointment is worse. Yeah. Anyways. That's my thoughts on it. <laughs>